I work at a fast food chain. I had a jerk come in one day and he demanded that I put on extra onions or else he's never coming back here and it's going to be the worst day of my life. So, what do I do? I give him what he wants, as many onions as he can handle. This happened years ago. I was working at a McDonald's on a highway rest stop as a teenager over the summer. I was making the burgers in the back when a belligerent customer came up, ordered a cheeseburger with extra onions. He made sure to emphasize, I want extra onions, loudly, and repeatedly, and banging his fist on the counter because last time he ordered the extra onions, there wasn't enough onions on it. My manager overheard the order as well because the customer was being loud and rude to the cashier. I looked over at the manager and he gave me the nod. He knew what I had in mind and that he would have my back. Cue malicious compliance. Standard cheeseburgers are supposed to have a little sprinkle of this diced onion mix. I proceeded to pile on about a cup of diced onion on top of the burger. To keep it from spilling off the burger, I alternated a slice of cheese between the one half inch thick onion layer. So a total of one and a half thick layers of diced onion and cheese ended up on this burger, along with the other toppings. I microwaved it so the melted cheese fused with the onions to keep it all together as best as possible. Wrapped it up and carefully put it on the counter for the cashier to pick up. It was as tall as a Big Mac, weighed three times a normal cheeseburger. The cashier picked it up and her eyes grew wide as she hesitantly bagged it, glanced at the manager as he waved her on, and walked back to her register. The customer snapped the bag out of her hands and says, This better have extra onions or I'll be back. We watched the guy grab his condiments and napkins and head to the seating area, so the manager stayed at the counter waiting for any blowback. It wasn't busy, so we went to staff members to go check for the napkin station. That was near the guy to see his reaction as he opened up his onion burger. Sure enough, he unwraps the burger, looks at it inquisitively, as the onions and cheese spill out the sides, does a little nod and smirk like this was exactly what he was looking for, and then proceeds to take a huge bite out of it. Chews a couple times, and his eyes then go wide and realizes he's made the biggest mistake of his life. Immediately spits it onto the tray. He sits there sheepishly for a few moments with an embarrassed look on his face, while he inspects the burger more closely. And you can see him ponder his next move while he drinks his soda pop and munches on his fries. He tries scraping off some onions onto the wrapper, but the cheese and other toppings are coming with it. Basically left him with a plain burger and a bun. He tries unsuccessfully to reassemble the burger with less onion and some of the other toppings, but it was just a big pile of onion, ketchup, mustard, cheese with a single pickle. He takes another bite, then throws it down on the tray in disgust. He finishes his fries, tosses out the burger in the trash, and we watch him leave in pure embarrassment. He doesn't ever even glance back to the counter on his way out. Well, that was a funny story of I should not mess with people who make my food. Let's read a couple comments. Once on a summer camp trip to Virginia Beach, I had to send a hamburger back five times because they could not understand no onions. I sympathize with this customer, though. Maybe not his tantrum, of course. That was the second to last time I ever ate at McDonald's. So guys, let me know your thoughts. Have you ever gone to a restaurant like this, fast food chain, and got exactly what you demanded, but it was over the top? Let me know your thoughts about this, guys. Drop your comments down below in the comment section, and let's turn our attention to story number two. Hey, this virus thing's no big deal, right? We must all come into the office even during an outbreak. Ah, all right, boss. If you I'm say a paralegal so. in a large metropolitan city in the United States. And at the time of the height of COVID pandemic 2020, I worked for a decently sized boutique personal injury firm. Despite having the largest caseload and the laziest and most toxic attorney in the firm, our boss decided I would be the COVID SAR. Meaning I had to have every employee, higher ups and boss included, fill out a COVID questionnaire every morning when they came in take their temperature, like you have been exposed, do you have a fever, when was your last test, blah blah blah. 
Everyone jerked and moaned with how strict I was enforcing the rules. But for a few months, we did well with keeping our COVID-free staff. When the holidays were approaching, I advised my boss and other managing attorneys in a meeting that because everyone was probably going home to see their families and loved ones over the holidays, we should have everyone WFH for the first 10 days, work from home, and for the new year at least to prevent a highly potential and highly probable outbreak. My boss smirked and said he did not see a reason as to even if someone was COVID positive. They can just work from home and the rest of the office could still come in. I pointed out that while that would be ideal, if one of the attorneys came in while positive and sat in their office, all the other attorneys, including himself, would be exposed because of all their offices being so small in the same wall. Meaning, the air vents in those offices all shared the same airflow. The boss just shrugs me off, and I followed up by putting it into an email. And one by one, everyone took their days off to visit their families over the holidays. In the new year, less than two days back in the office, one of the attorneys, who was young and reckless as we all were young, came in sniffling and attempting not to cough. They had a low-grade fever, and I alerted the managing attorney and texted our boss, straining that he needs to be sent home immediately. Both of them, literally both told me to just have him stay in his office and announce when he had to leave, to the bathroom, the lunch, the copier, etc., so the staffs working on the main area could put their mask on. The staff always wore their mask regardless because we weren't a bunch of idiots and knew the risk they were putting us in, but I had no choice, as there were zero other opportunities out there for jobs. Throughout the day, the attorney's symptoms got increasingly worse. I text the boss again that he needs to be sent home. Boss finally arrives, looks at the attorney and says, You alright, right? You don't need to go home, it's just a cough, right? Well... He had been torturing this attorney for months prior, so we all knew the attorney's response would be, Of course, it's just a sniffle, sir, I can work. Sure enough, he almost said those exact words. The next day, the attorney reaches out and says his symptoms are worse, and his PCR came back positive. So now the boss lets him work from home. The day after that, the attorney in the office next to him messages us that he woke up with symptoms and his work from home out of caution. Then another... And another. And another. And eventually, all the attorneys who had offices on the same wall with the air vents in between them are all reporting symptoms and positive tests. By the beginning of the following week, 75% of the office is working from home with symptoms either positive or waiting PCR results, including myself. We had to shut down the office for three weeks because they weren't enough people to run the office, even on bare bones, as everyone got sick pretty much at the same time. When I became sick, my boss wrote in a group chat, Of course you have symptoms, OP. You probably wish for this happened since you just had to have a freaking point to prove. Well, we'd been killing ourselves for this man, and that message was the last straw that broke that camel's back. A month after everybody returned, the boss was furious and irate that we've received... Several anonymous complaints from the state. We did them gradually to lengthen the process, received several fines and surprised inspections for months to make sure he was following the rules and in compliance with the pandemic restrictions. We didn't get him to shut down for good, but after that, every time someone tested positive, he automatically assigned the entire office to work from home for at least two weeks with several negative PCR results per employee before they could return to the office. I cannot imagine working for somebody like that. Guys, let's read the comment that was posted by OP. It was a response to another comment that says this. Wow. Holy crap. There's a special place in heck for that guy. What a do canoe. Do canoe, says OP, is a great term. I haven't used it in a long time. He ended up letting me go a few months after without a cause. But I was fortunate enough to be able to collect unemployment and take a half year off before I really needed to gain employment again. The firm I started working for after this one is particularly in all of my control with an employer who seeks my advice, and I couldn't be happier. As for the firm of the post, I'm still in touch with a few staff members, but all the associate attorneys left shortly after me, 
and four staff positions have been repeated turnovers. Guys, let me know if you've ever had problems like that with your boss who was just making ridiculous rules. Rules after rules which resulted in high turnover rate. Now it's time for story number three, and the title is this. Alright, you want to install the new lock on my door, right? Oh, the money I'm trying to give you is not enough? Huh, well I'll do it myself. My bro, he's a cousin of mine, we rented a place where the front door's knob lock was in bad shape. After some time, the lock actually broke down. So, we bought a new knob lock about a hundred yards from our apartment. We met a guy who saw the new lock in my hand, introduced him himself as a locksmith, and asked if we needed a lock replacement service. Sure, follow us? We said without much thought. So, the locksmith came with us at our door and we asked for his price for the job. He demanded five pounds. We actually laughed out loud at his price. We weren't certified mechanics at the time, but being from a family of mechanics and engineers, we already had a good enough idea about how much a lock replacement work should be paid in our area. We told the locksmith that we would pay only 50 pence. I kid you not, the guy said in a very, very polite manner, Eh, well that's too low. Why don't you do it yourself and keep your 50 pence? Then he turned and left before we could say a word, muttering about time wasting, so we decided to take his parting advice to our hearts. We were strapped for cash, and that was the factor too. So we opened up the lockbox, and the first thing came out, it was a manual. Bingo. Bro read the manual thoroughly, and we all realized that the job was even easier than we initially thought it was. Five minutes later, the new lock started its duty. Alas, the lock serviceman did not know that, because when he returned eight minutes later, he couldn't see the shiny new lock installed on our door. Maybe the fact that I stood in front of our door blocking the lock from view and had something to do with it. All right, he said, I'll do it for 50 pence. Do what for 50? The lock. I'll replace the lock for 50 pence. Now, my bro said, somehow channeling the locksmith earlier polite manner, uh, sorry, but we've already replaced it ourselves, dude. He hauled my butt from the front of the door to show the lock guy our handiwork. The guy just said, oh, and left the building. I'm not sure if he heard my bros muttering about wasting time. I actually feel bad about the incident. Maybe that locksmith really needed that 50 pence, or he would not have come back in hindsight. We also made the mistake of not negotiating the job earlier and bringing him along. But well, he told us to do his job, and we happily complied. The absolute madness in the comment section of this one. Everyone's going back and forth arguing, saying, Hey, we think you're in the wrong, OP. And then other people come to OP's rescue. But the main issue is saying this. I think five pounds is plenty reasonable to install new locks. And the fact that you had to go lower than that proves that you're the jerk, and you know what? I don't think that you were right in this situation. Sure, you installed it yourself, but that doesn't mean you should disrespect the price of a locksmith, especially when it was something like five pounds. So I have one question for you guys. If you were in this position and you were the locksmith, what would you do? And also, do you think OP was right or wrong? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, guys. Go ahead and drop that down there. And I do have one more story for you guys. Boss told me to deep clean the back and not to come to the front for any reason. So I did just exactly like the boss wanted. I'm a 20-year-old male that works at a very popular restaurant in a very snobby area. My main job is to assist the servers in any way I can, so they only have to worry about sweet-talking the customers. I do all the heavy lifting for them, whether it's cleaning their tables, taking their drinks and food to their tables. I'm doing it, and all they have to do is focus on making the customers laugh. They get tips that range from $17 to $40 per table, while I'm making 8 bucks an hour and get treated poorly. Enough backstory, let's go ahead and cue the malicious compliance. My manager came up to me and saying, I'm better than you, Mood, and told me to deep clean the floors, ice makers, walls, trash cans, and racks, and not come to the front for any reason at all. Well, I'm very annoyed at this because none of those things are my job duties. We have a staff that deals with all the cleaning of the back. So, 
it didn't make any sense for me to have to do it. These tasks would often take me an hour and a half max, but I was feeling a bit cheeky and decided to really deep clean the back until it was spotless. About 30 minutes later, the same manager comes up to me and tells me that there are four tables that need cleaning. Two of the other tables just got sat and I need to bring their drinks to them. I looked at this man with the stare of a 20-year-old that has no bills to pay and I say no, I'm not done cleaning. He looked shocked and responded angrily, oh, You can finish later. They need your help now and I countered with no, it's filthy here. We don't have a health inspector to just walk into this filth, do we? He storms off like a toddler and did not get their candy. Two hours go by and I'm on my hands and knees scrubbing, as if I was working for Chef Gordon Ramsay himself. The same manager comes back again with a smirk and says, Wow, this looks like it's going to take you all day long. Maybe you should come to the front and help the servers since there's a huge Sunday rush. I replied with, You know... You might be right, and I go back to cleaning, he storms off again. Fast forward to two minutes before my shift ends, my knees, legs, and fingers are all aching from the cleaning. I shuffle my way to the front where my manager has been waiting for me, and he says, you finally decided to come help here, huh? And I look at him without saying anything. I just clock out and then tell him I'm sorry I'm not clocked in. I walked out to my car, while he was blowing my phone up, I didn't care. I had five days off, back to back to back. And he could not fire me since I did as he told. The moral of the story is, don't think you're better than someone that has nothing to lose. So, you know I love similar situation comments. Here's a similar situation comment that a commenter can relate to the story I just read. Here it is. When I was a college student making hamburgers in a crappy dining hall, I asked off a month in advance so my band could play a gig. The week of, they tell me I can't have that day off anymore. So the conversation went as followed. Oh, well, I guess I'll just quit then. Really? Over this? You know you need to give two weeks notice, right? Otherwise, you'll be blacklisted at Aramark. What does Aramark do? You know, like college dining, stadium vendors, etc. Oh, okay, I'm good. See ya. I miss that kind of power. So guys, let me know your thoughts about this. Do you miss that kind of power of being really young, not having many responsibilities and not any bills, and being able to leave the so-called powerful boss jerk that has hold of you? Let me know your thoughts of that, guys. Drop it in the comment section down below. That's all the stories for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it here on Mr. Redito. I have stories every single day. You can find all my channels in the description below. I hope to see you tomorrow for an even crazier story. Have a great day.